<laughs> Hello everyone. Welcome to our live uh, YouTube live. Uh, I'm here. Uh, my name is Sarah, as many you probably know, and this guy here is Samuli. He, uh, you don't see him too often on this channel, but he's the man who's behind the camera filming, also behind our websites, training platforms, does all the technical design stuff. And so we have a very, very big announcement to make here. We're at the moment, we're in St. Saint, uh, Saint Petersburg, Russia. So we came here just uh, like uh, less than a week ago from Finland. And so we're here to we want to tra be training MMA. We want to train Sambo here. We have actually the first class is on Saturday. So very excited to see how, how they do the, uh, the MMA training around here. But the other thing that we are doing here is that we have a, we are very, very busy right now. And this is why you won't see that many videos at the moment on the channel. And we've been working on, uh, or we've actually, so this all started, you know, because we visited, we've been visiting Taiwan for three times. And we visited the Taiwan's master of monkey kung fu there. And basically, we have from all of these three times that we visited Taiwan, we have a lot of material that is completely un unpublished. We haven't put it out anywhere. And these last two times that we were in Taiwan, uh, we've actually started to work on some a, a little bit bigger project uh, with this master there related to Qigong. So we really want to bring something uh, something out for you guys because we found so much valuable information on these trips to Taiwan. Yeah, so basically, basically we will be doing a course on like Qigong, health Qigong and fighting Qigong and it will have like everything there is to know about like the very foundation of Qigong and it will be like stuff you haven't seen anywhere before because this master, his level and his knowledge and his like the expertise is very, very unique. Like I've seen a lot of stuff, Hero has seen a lot of mm -hmm. stuff like what everyone else does and we haven't seen like anything like this and at this level. So it will be mm -hmm. like really exciting to show this to you as well because we were surprised over and over again yeah, this is true. Like we, there are some things like we talk about. We talk about like the breathing stuff, that, for example, learn because we've been to like you know breathing. I think nowadays is a somewhat a, sometimes kind of like trend. You know, there's different type of methods that people have about breathing, and we even been to like a breathing seminar that was like a with like day long a seminar with all sorts of different breathing things. Yeah, like and with some very notorious like a uh, like a. Uh, yeah, people in the fitness. Yeah, I'm like a really big guy, like learning some like breathing workshop. Mm. Breathing for martial arts and such. And we this still like it's not not even close to the stuff that we've been learning there in Taiwan with the master. Uh, the knowledge of, of that is in the real Qigong is really, really amazing. It goes very deep. It's like because you have the breathing, you have the different contraction, you have the different diaphragmatic control. And you, you you have even a different like a mindset that you do in the training. This is all something you can't even it's not visible really to the eye when you see like the master do a form. Like you can watch it like outside and you're like you just don't know what's happening. You think you may be like, okay, he's doing some movement or this and that, but you don't know what's going on really inside you know, the control that he has. It's really, really amazing. And there's going to be actually a video out soon that demonstrates some of these techniques. So I think it'll be interesting for you to see actually what we're talking about here. So yes, it's really like the stuff we are learning here and we are going to teach is something like really goes deep in the body and really affects your like physiology, like deep inside, like you will learn to like breathe and control your hormon hormonal system and mm. like everything and from inside out, like from mentality to physicality. And it's that's why it's really complex and it's really has lots of the uh, as well. Yeah, this is uh, like this is what we figured out. Like it's already, I think, even from the first time we were there, it brought new elements to our training that we were all like doing for quite a bit time, and it made a big difference. And now, even like uh, the second time, the third time, every time we we'll, we got some like more ingredients that we can use. And it, but the thing is, like it was so valuable. Like as someone mentioned, like just how deep it goes to the body, how you can learn to like really manipulate your and the hormonal system, your mood, your energy, and everything. It goes so fundamentally deep that this is, you know, and, and you, you, at this moment, 
this is like pretty much behind like closed doors. So I think like we are almost maybe the first ones to really bring Qigong in its full depth to, to like a broader audience. And this is what I'm very really excited about and this is what we wanted to really uh, do. Yeah, and because not a lot of people know about, about it, but in Asia, the, like the Qigong practice, it goes from family to family, like between the, like the different generations. And it's often like kept in very small circles and behind the closed doors. Even like today, if you go to any real Kung Fu, like, like art, you cannot do any video. You, cannot, you only can take maybe some pictures and you have to be really careful uh, with the master if you can show it to others or not that's like you true. like that's why when you search like monkey kung fu or something you cannot find really anything online but in reality it's like it's the system is massive they have like like so many so much stuff but it's just not like available because of that like that yeah 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 i mean i think like so this chi kung forms that you use is like they this, it's a straight uh, what is lineage from Shaolin temple, like yeah, pure, the, yeah, lineage. It's a pure lineage, uh, straight from the source. There's no like watering down. He, he went to the Taiwan, uh, searched the actual masters there uh, that had uh, this knowledge and learned from them. And not, right now, like he is the he's the grand master and the holder of the monkey fist uh, in Taiwan at the moment, like the oldest uh, person. So this is you know probably tells you like what kind of knowledge uh, he possesses like the thing is like he, he you can ask anything about almost like qigong or I mean, what kung fu basically martial arts and you'll get answers uh, from this man yeah and yeah exactly like he calls like the other styles like hybrid styles because it's like some bits and pieces from everywhere mm. so it's not really like a pure style of qigong or kung fu and that's why if you search like Qigong online, YouTube or anywhere else, it's just, it's very different from the stuff we have learned. It's like most of the stuff is really weird and it's really like new age, like, like this. It's like, it's to me, a lot of it's just nonsense. It's like Western style carpets mostly. It's not the real stuff. The real stuff, it can be really strong and really like, <clears throat> Yeah, <laughs> and even, like, exactly like that. It can be really like intense and really aggressive and really fierce, but it can also be really calm and like mm -hmm. that. But it's not the way the same as what you see on YouTube and in the West, in the different countries like Australia or United States, mm -hmm. like that. It's just not the same. It's not the new age like like all the cliche stuff what you see. It's not the same, it's mm -hmm. different. Yeah, there's no pretentious stuff. And I think well, previously, at least like I wasn't able to even like to re really separate, but after like seeing what he does and seeing the techniques that he uses, and now like be, having this a uh, little bit like ability to read what is going on, for example, when he does Qigong exercises or something, you can like tell like what is he actually doing with, uh, you know, there. Like now being able to see that you can like compare and watch these other people when they do it and there's no sign of really that the essence of the qigong is kind of lacking and it's mostly it can be sort of imitation of movements and then there's this funny spiritual trying like want to be kind of like trying to be spiritual yeah they all weird they, ways, so it sometimes they have this like really like seating or this music like bells and all stuff that stuff and they speak very softly and listen to my voice and they do <laughs> all the like the soft qigong movements and it's like that but and these guys they're always very like skinny and soft and maybe like feminine as well but in reality if you want to be a real qigong master you have to be both hard and soft and that's like the real stuff mm. yeah i think like the the softer style Qigong is in some ways more familiar, but no one really has no idea that this is actually a form of like, that is called fighting Qigong, that is uh, the complete opposite of this, but also like equally beneficial. And, and it's also like there's something very interesting thing is that some of the forms of Qigong, for example, are not uh, recommended, for example, for, for women or they're kind of like forbidden. So there's this very interesting like, type of things when you go really deep uh, deep to it and learn about it 
but we are really, like we said, we're trying to make a course uh, from this. And it would have, it's not just that you get some forms, you actually get uh, theory, you get knowledge about China, Chinese medicine, because it always goes together with the Qigong. You get the forms, the different, the, the sort of the fundamentals, and everything comes in this one package of like a Qigong, a Qigong course. So if you have um, right now some questions, uh, yeah, I would also like to talk about the master himself. Oh. Like, I think right now, like, only after three times we have been there three times, and first time we were like two weeks, then the second time we were three weeks, and now we were three weeks. So we have spent a lot of time with the master, and only after the third time we started to really like see the depth and really understand even the man himself, because. Right now, people think it's very normal in the online world. Like they see some stuff from one from the guy, and then they think I got this figured out. Like I know what this guy is doing, but in reality, no one knows really what he's like, what he can do. Like only he is very private person as well. Like like most people, and mm -hmm. he has only shown some shown some really like. A really small piece of what he can actually do. Like we have seen what he can do, and it's like goes well beyond what you see right now online. And and I think the same happens with us as well. Like people sometimes, just because we show something online, they think they know exactly what we do and everything we do. But in reality, even today, like I think we haven't shown even like not even a lot. I would say. But we have shown a lot, but not yeah, we've shown a lot, but but uh, yeah, that there's stuff that you just you can't see, you can't see unless you've actually done an experience with your body, and this is what it kind of comes down to, like just watching some sort of like a, a video, and then well, you know what is exactly what's happening there. You know, we talk for a very very long time about like these things that go behind the training, go behind exercise form mind muscle connection tempo and so on and so on it's just like this this control that you have and this is also something that is usually is not visible for people and it ch but it changes every single thing like that inner thing that you have and you can have a sort of similar type of form but the other one actually produces great results the other one can maybe you can even injure yourself or something like and this is all something that most people do have or don't have the ability really to see or read this you know unless you've been for example a coach for years so our work with you know some clients or, and been training uh, like have been doing and also like you, you mentioned you know this the master there has been kind of also underground he kind of became online 2015 i think was and and he, even after that he did yeah. like he he's mostly like popular and mostly like known in the chinese and taiwanese media mm. which is written in like the mandarin chinese and only after 20 uh, the 15 he started to post on some like Instagram and some really like normal stuff and nothing like I'm trying to like show something yeah especially yeah this is true like very very sort of small scale stuff and, and in Chinese so not very big spread in a way and he was actually because he was a uh, because he was underground he was a special force a teacher in Taiwan sort of the what is the Delta Force there and so that's why he kind of couldn't be really, really out there. And he's also like called himself a, a dinosaur because he's not really so in tune with the, like everything, like the technology and so on. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean he doesn't have the knowledge and expertise. And I think we will show lots of free stuff soon, free videos and free articles. Mm -hmm. And like it will be really evident like the skill and the expertise of this guy. Yeah. This is, this is, yeah, there's at the moment like currently we are or preparing material like right now basically that's going to be very very soon on this channel yeah like right now it's really intense work period for us because we will be just working and doing the videos and doing the articles and and, and, and mm -hmm. working on the course as well and, but yeah like i would like to say about the like especially in the western world it's like it's so superficial 
everything about fitness, everything about health. It's like it's just like I want to learn the skill, I want to build muscle, I want to lose fat, and it's mm -hmm. all good. But it's really like the lowest level or the first level, and it goes like your layers and layers mm -hmm. and layers beneath it. And it's it's so funny because in like even the, like the functionality, which is like skill, it's still a really superficial level in mm. compared to like what we have learned. Yeah, I think for me it's like the because it's for people it's like they they see that they can only progress in in this so simple and shallow stuff like well I gained a little bit muscle and this is the only sign that you made progress or you you can lift a little bit more weight and then you're like well I made progress but. Once you go to this world of like Qigong and even the training that we've been doing, the progress is not limited to this of numbers at all. And it comes very, very holistic, like as a whole, like, like a, how you feel in, in general, like overall your being, whole being, like is, you can see the progress in everything you know, which you have. And this is also a really big thing in Qigong as well, because it's such a, you know, it goes to the level of like building life force like these guys you know the whatever the monks like the ancient monks like thousands of years ago developed these training methods as a form of like just tuning into their bodies and, and building their health and then developing also like fighting skills and this also what you must understand that the qigong is actually behind also these different like iron body skills uh what they have like the hardening like being able to just take this Hits. Yeah, and the performance yeah the like performance the, everything like the master always said that if you are if you are like a true chico master you have to prove it somehow like you have to either break something you have to compete or you have to show you like because like the chi to be a chico master you have to have a really high chi and the chi is like vitality and the spirit of your body like and it means your ability to perform or do something because it's not this this western nonsense they talk about like some random they don't even like can define it because they think it's just some random stuff or some like universe energy or something and maybe it is like that but it's also the ability to do something and that's like the i think that's one of the best mm -hmm. definitions of chi is the like the spirit and the presence and the yeah. vitality of the body like how like how actually like alive you are mm -hmm. you are and that's what the qigong masters in the past and in the ancient times have tried to do and and like increase the vitality of the body yes and the aliveness of the body because like skill and even strength is still very superficial because if you look at like any competition, sports or mixed martial arts or martial arts, it's it's never it's not always the guy with the most skill or the most strength, but the one who has like the more the best spirit. Yeah, the best spirit and who is like the just like like has like a endless amount of energy and the endless amount of spirit and endless amount of confidence to keep pushing and that's what's like uh, chi i would say really is she allows you to do that thing yeah yeah and it's like so like it's so superficial because even in the like many higher level teachers in the west although they speak about breathing not like it's they still don't really understand it. Like, like what we have discovered recently is that breathing is even more important than we originally thought. Like it's yeah. it's it's it is the it is the what like allows the body to like function. It is the, the main yeah, yeah. the main source of energy and the main source of everything. It's, everything comes from the breath. It's actually quite interesting the the process of like understanding breathing because the, like this has started like years ago or like well you know breathing you know you train in breathing in certain ways and then there were there has been these seminars that we learned it and and uh, all all kinds of like workshops and stuff where we learn to breathe and, and in yoga it comes to breathing and all this like but it never became so evident the importance of it. Because usually, I think it, it only starts to really work when you understand what it, like the, the importance of it. 
this is when you really start to like pay attention to the focus on it. And, and this this is something I think also it gave me just made it so like what is tangible to understand like the benefits of breathing and the effect that it has on your strength and just uh, your, your life force spirit. It feels like all the power comes from the breathing, all the endurance comes from the breathing, like all the really strong stuff comes from the breathing. But it's also like the recovery also comes from the breathing. But it's really yeah, it's behind. behind. Yeah, like one very interesting actually a detail that uh, the master said like because they need for some of the special force they have these like measurements for breathing. And if you like use the sort of normal type of breathing that most people actually use, it can be like around maybe five liters in the volume that you can breathe. But when you use like this sort of fully developed breathing that you do in the in the Qigong, uh, the volume you can breathe can raise somewhere like 50 liters, like 10, uh, 10 times. So there are some, there's some practice that you can do, do for that. Um, so, do you have anything to add about the Qigong before we start to move on to the Q&A? Yeah, not really. I think there's already some good questions. Oh, there's, yeah. Like, when will uh, would the course be available? I think we will get it ready this month or later this month. But, like, latest next month, but I would say this month. And no, it will be, uh, will the program be called Cheek and 20XX? No, it will be called something else. Yeah. I'm just watching. There's also like, what is the one best result of practicing Cheek on in your opinion? I think we have kind of answered that, that maybe the breathing, just learn to breathe because that's the beginning for for everything. It's the beginning also that you need to do if you want to actually do the Qigong uh, exercises in the correct manner, you need to breathe them. And it also, the Qigong practice develops the body in a very special and very different way than we are used to, like, you get sore and, like, my neck was sore, like, for a week after I did some <laughs> exercises, and they look really simple, and also it really targets the back in a very different way. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point because, you know, again, it, it can be like, well, it develops some mystical attributes, this and that, but it actually also just, it really builds the muscles as well in the body and develops them very truly, like every single, almost every single muscle yeah, gets like, covered in the... Yeah, like the exercises we will bring is like some of the best mobility work you can do mm. for like the entire body. Like you will target the, every part really well. Now let's see what else. Is it better to practice this earlier or later in the evening? Uh, there, I think, like there in the course, there was some recommendations, like when we do the, the chicken routines and what, what time of the day. But maybe if you ask in general, I think it, it depends a little bit. I like to train usually later in the in, in, like evening, but in the morning, actually, like for the Chicken work is really, really good stuff. It helps you to wake up as well and build energy. Any tips on how to correct anterior pelvic tilt? So this is probably the most <laughs> common thing that you can sometimes find from YouTube, like postural videos or tips on some sort of posture, it always comes uh, down to this um, posterior, uh, no, anterior pelvic tilt, which basically means I can show here. You can move this a little bit. So anterior pelvic tilt is when your pelvis is tilted this way. So this is the anterior side, this is the posterior side, and when your pelvis is sort of leveled, it's like this way, it can tilt anteriorly here. <laughs> so this is just to make, uh, make very clear what it means. And usually, but it causes people to have this sort of lordosis and sometimes like overly tight, uh, overly tight lower back and sometimes some, some anyway, a lot of like hip injuries and stuff like that. And personally, the best way that I think to start fix that is to understand what it is. So you need to know what it is just and then start to activate the muscles that actually turn pelvis to a more neutral position. So best glutes, 
Hamstrings, I think it's sometimes even more important than the glutes because many people emphasize that you squeeze your glutes to turn the pelvis. But actually, you can't be standing all the time squeezing your glutes. So hamstrings, you can turn the pelvis this way to a neutral position by controlling the hamstrings a little bit. And this also kind of, uh, you manage to avoid like overly tight glutes as well. So it's about understanding the muscles that, you know, just to give like a quick idea of posture. This is one of the best things I have changed my posture. It doesn't matter if it's postural or anterior pelvic tilt or if you have a kyphosis or something. It all comes down to what we actually explain is partly like energy. So you need to sometimes change your whole being as well because you, you need energy to actually change, make changes in your body. Once you have the energy, you can also, then you can have a better posture, you can control your posture. And this way you actually start to see much more benefits than just correcting a certain like individual tilt somewhere. So there's a question like, uh, will the new program consist of Qigong only or else? Well, I would say the new, the new course will consist of everything. It will consist of everything, will uh, even like some habits, theory, theory and like health Qigong, like mobility Qigong style, and also fighting Qigong, and even some hardening stuff. So it will be like a really comprehensive, mm -hmm. like a uh, course on like everything about the Chinese health practice, not just because Qigong. I mean, the Qigong is it. Yeah, 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 yeah. People yeah. don't really understand, maybe understand how wide of a... Yeah, like Qigong, it's not just like this, what well, I have to show it and explain it more in depth, like later. How do you find Qigong fits with meditative practice for pain control? This is interesting because the master there actually don't really like the term meditation. Uh, for him, meditation is just basically, I think it was sitting, breathing. Or, or meditation is simply breathing and focusing on your body. And you know, you can be counting, you know, breathing and you get breathing for, there's breathing for relaxation. It helps to also like loosen up the body and, you know, remove pain. There's also breathing for warming, uh, for, to, to feel warm, to create warmth in the body. There's going to be a breathing thing for, I think, for, for strength. And what else was there? Like the breathing for resting. So you get these different, very interesting breathing techniques for these things uh, to, to get a certain like um, effect on your body. So this is going to be uh, very interesting. And it certainly helps with uh, meditation as well. And, and actually, like the, the pain, like a, the energy thing that I mentioned, this comes down like removing pain from the body comes down to doing you know some exercises to correct the muscles, which is also, you know, we've already been doing a lot on this channel as well. It also comes down to not having the breathing there as well, learning the correct breathing methods, learn to relax as well, because if you're constantly tight, that can also cause pain. So I think the Qigong course should help you relieve pain in many, many areas in your body as well. And I think one of the really good naturally done fighting Qigong because like nothing like really does it better. It's yeah. because it has everything you could ever need for that. Yeah, if you find yourself like a, I don't know, just this feeling, I don't know what it is, like just feel like little energetic low testosterone or libido or something. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's see what else. Yeah, it's a program of holistic routine or it's additional strength training. It, it is a holistic, complete routine. It's not additional or something. It is good as it, as it is. Of course, you know, there are other type of training they can do, but this course is complete. Mm. Yeah, and the launch date will be later this month, probably. Yeah, uh, yeah, this is true. But latest next month. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah. There, there is like some, like we said, there's a lot, of, lot to do. We're really like trying to uh, hurry with it at the moment. But yeah, the, it is really big. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, about abdominal exercises, does it matter what ab muscle group you start with and isolate? Side, upper, lower, to get the best results. Mm, I don't think it, you can actually start with any 
type of muscle you want. I personally think this way, but usually maybe the most con convenient way is just first train your or it's the, the, the rectus abdominis, like right here. Train all this, uh, this the upper and lower abdominals. It's a very simple way to start with those. You can do crunches, leg raises, planks. You get to train this whole part. It also does activate already the obliques, but then you need to, this is the thing, like you can't stay there. Like we made uh, the abs training XX that we made, you know, this uh, some time or some time ago, which is a complete abdominal program. You know, most people don't understand that because there's just always like, well, because it, you know, you do basic crunches, you do squats, you know, it activates areas here. So you don't have to do any special training for them, but that's not really true. You will leave this very, very like undeveloped if you don't specifically focus on these areas. It's always good to start with simple exercises, but the body is very highly uh, complex and every different these sort of functions and movements that you have is important and you need to start adding those also to your routines. So it's not really, I would say it's best to start with the simple stuff, you know, just do like, the, like I said, crunch, leg raise, planks, that's a good stuff. Then you can do side planks. Then you need to start doing rotations, uh, side bending, and all these sort of different type of uh, exercise to get a complete core development. Yeah, like the, a big mistake I did in the past, like in, when I first started training, like many years in the beginning, was that I believe the nonsense that like maybe just deadlifts is enough for the mm. abs or the back squat or any exercise like pull up, like because they will train the abs. But after three years, like my obliques and so many parts of the core were really undeveloped and really weak and, and no amount of squats or deadlifts or pull-ups or any other like big compound exercise would have fixed that problem for me. Mm. Only like the more advanced you get, the more you need to learn how to isolate and target different parts of the body. Like the big combat exercises, they work really well in the beginning when you're a beginner. But, after, true, yeah. but after a while, it, it just becomes more about the sophistication and precision. Let's see. Tips for flat feet. Uh, well, hard to say if it will really completely like create a huge arch to your foot, but foot training is something that also, we, you know, it's rarely covered anywhere, but you can actually train your foot and the toes and everything also in a very detailed manner. And I've even done like a program with like foot and toe training for people in my coaching. Because it may, it can actually make surprisingly big effect on your overall performance as well. Because all movement starts from like connecting the ground, there's rooting, you know, and how do you you can you, you can actually produce a super a surprising amount of force with the toes. There's very important in stabilizing. So my advice for you, like regarding, don't really focus that much on just like well you have a five feet, okay, but just start actually training your foot. Start training it in all possible ways. Start doing like a this sort of like a toe flexion. So it's toe extension. Whenever you do squats, whenever you do deadlift, whatever movement it is, uh, even standing, you need to see like what, how are your toes positioned? Are your are your big toe? Sometimes people have like their big toe is always in the air. It's never supported, so it collapses the arch. So pay attention to the just to the articulation, the positions of your toes. See if you can man manipulate and control them and get your feet into a better position. You know, become aware of it and then apply it to everything you do. Training, also everyday life, just standing around, walking and so on. What do you think about Indian foods? We actually had Indian food yesterday and it was really good. Yeah, I have to say like the, the, the restaurants in St. Petersburg are like just amazing. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, like the Eastern restaurants. Yeah. They seem to be really like authentic spices, authentic taste in food. Uh, sometimes in fi like Finland has good quality food, but it's usually it's not really like that authentic. Sometimes the foreign food as you get there, but I feel like here it really is. Mass gainers necessary. 
you know, there uh, no supplement is really necessary to gain muscle. I did uh, like years ago. I used to like use sort of like this uh, wee protein powder, uh, but I don't think that that's that was necessary. It was more like it come from marketing mostly. You know, bodybuilders and everybody is just going to trying to sell them that it's no harm. You can use protein powder, but it's not necessary. Right. Let's see if there's some. Can you speak Finnish a little? Can we go and take some Puhua Suomea? Mä en osaa puhua ollenkaan. Samuli ei puhu suomea oikein. No. Onko siellä yhtään suomalaisia katsomassa tätä videota? All right. There's a best cardio exercise for fat loss. Fat loss. No, so no. like the, personally, I like the high intensity workouts the best, like warrior 26 style. Because, I don't know, because like my weight goes like like this and every time i do like lots of high intensity work like like high intensity workouts with very little rest and full body movements then my weight goes like this and mm -hmm. and i do like lots of regular cardio like walking and stuff like that but my weight just doesn't move at all yeah, like it, the question is like what exercise is best, but it's not really about the exercise, it's like the actual the exercise style, the whole style that you're doing. And I think the high intensity also, because I was actually like, I wasn't in any way even fat, but I was still, after I started to do like, in the beginning of like last year, a lot of conditioning work, create the Warrior 20XX, I was losing weight just by doing the conditioning training and very, very rapidly, because it's, it's so high intense and it's very demanding as well, that's the thing about it. But you get uh, good, fast results by going quite hard. Mm -hmm. so you do you implement the information about the Qigong philosophy into the program? I mean, the right mindset be beside, be uh, you mean behind physical exercise. The mind aspect will uh, is a part of the, the Qigong course as well, actually. And you will also learn the basics of like the Chinese medicine as well, or like the health practice as well. And yeah, and also like a lot of information about the history and background. And yeah, because it's it's uh, like the Qigong and the, the whole world is it's such different from the West because they used to have a really different framework on how they see things and how they understand things because it's really this uh, scientific western mind so we have to first like introduce you to like to some chinese concepts which mm -hmm. are really easy to learn and really pay, uh, like really uh, understandable mm -hmm. so yeah there's really interesting like uh, i don't i read, read about this like some time ago but like just sort of like an example of the western worldview and the difference to the chinese it's like when you have, a, for example, sickness in the body in the Western world, so they kind of often treat an area, like a specific area, or you know, they give a certain like a pill to something, or you know, you have the, they treat like this, this very like detailed point. So you have like this one area is sick. In Chinese medicine, if you like sick, you have a, a symptom in somewhere in your body. They think that the whole body is kind of sick, actually. And that this is like how they treat also the body. They like sort of treat it a little bit differently, not always focusing on that specific little area, but like as a whole and trying to improve the body. And that often works also. What else is there? Thanks for your work. No problem. It's nice to hear. It seems that there's many of you are looking forward to this Jacob program. That is really awesome. Uh, personally, so excited about this as well. Um, I'm actually currently like I'm doing the the Qigong stuff that we learned. I'm doing this almost every day, practicing it. 
it's also one of those things that like, you really need to stay con uh, like keep doing it to really realize it through your body and, and go deep in it. like you can't just like this is one of those things like if you watch like a forum and then you, you, you do it once and you're like well i got this you certainly don't you don't, you don't have it you need to keep practicing and refining it and it gets better all the time Mother, mother showed. I don't know what is mother showed. Is rice good? Rice good for muscle building? Uh, I think it can be. You know, you need some. Well, not everyone necessarily needs a lot of carb, but if you like to eat carbs, you can eat rice, pasta, or whatever bread. It's all all good for muscle building. Favorite sports aside from fitness? Well, this we already mentioned quickly in the start and what we're actually doing in Russia is we are training MMA and we're also going to try some Sambo. So uh, we are very, very big into in the mix and martial arts, basically. And I also used to do fencing in Finland and mm -hmm. other martial arts and, and dance. And that's pretty much it's like martial arts and martial arts and dance. Yeah, we've done a lot of dance as, as well. Do you plan some kind of exercise control to prevent injuries? Maybe by webcam. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure what you mean, but uh, this sort of exercise control or, or training to prevent injuries is something that we I actually do a lot. And I do this through Skype with my online clients. Uh, so this is like a, you know, through a webcam, yes. Uh, I'm not sure if this is what you mean, but in my online coaching, I do this type of training through Skype calls. Have you learned spontaneous chicken as well? Hmm. In some ways, you could say yes, you know, there's there's like a point, for example, the master said like after you've done the forms uh, for some time, like you can sort of put your own twist to it as well, your own expression. This is actually why I like chicken as well. Like it does allow a little bit of like also this individual expression how you do these movements, and also like through my own you know dance practice, my own training practice, even before chicken. Or I knew everything everything about chicken. I went very deep with the training, so some of it may be. I don't know, reminds uh, some stuff that you can find from chicken. I wouldn't call it chicken, but if maybe that's the closest spontaneous chicken that you can do. You know, if you do breathing and movement together, you can say that you're sort of doing a uh, chicken type of training. Which one? The last one. We don't see. Uh, why am I all in the face of the channel? Well, we're trying, you know, we're trying to bring like someone also every now and then here, but at the moment, like he's been the guy who's all, he's always there. He's, you know, being filming, he's doing like the, all the camera work. And so when you have two people, it's kind of more convenient this way. And I am, you know, I'm the head coach here in the Wild Peters. We both train a lot, but this is kind of how the roles have gone. Like we both have very different. Uh, kind of task that we do, and it's also about the personality because, mm. like, for Aero, it it suits him very well to be like like in the front all the time. But for me, I like to be like behind the scenes and then come every now and then, but not all the time. Yeah, so it's very fine <laughs> for me. Like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we have a little bit different personalities. We I think we look even a little bit different. You know. <laughs> There's some other uh, greetings to Brazil, Douglas. Hmm. I've hurt my knee and I did various upper body exercises yesterday, so I don't really know what to do now. So you 
you know any lower body exercise that don't involve the knee so much so you want to be training basically your legs without training mm, training the knees uh, which you probably mean like quadriceps you can do for example um hip bridges if you want, because it means probably that you want to be training your like posterior side so you can be training like isometrics like hip bridges or pump like train the glutes uh, you can train deadlifts, straight leg deadlift, for example. Those don't involve bending the knees either. So you maybe need to focus on that. But in most cases, like when you have <coughs> when you have knee pain, there's some sort of perhaps serious weakness in the quadriceps, and you don't want to avoid uh, like moving the knee. Actually, you just want to be training it properly. You want to be training it with control because most people have no idea how to control the knee joint. They do the squats and they always snap their knees, and they, do, they bounce into the bottom, no control, and just they don't have the ability to control the knee joint. So my best advice is, you know, yes, you can now, if it's very badly aggravated, you maybe need to let it calm down a little bit. But as soon as you can, start training the quadriceps, start training the knees. You can do isometrics, but everything, anything that you, no matter what form of squat it is, you do it with control and slow tempo. Okay, you need to get your quads burning. And this, you can even do like a leg extension to the machine. Very, very good training if you do it well. So there's a question, uh, do you do the same kind of training? And like, what is different in your practices? Yeah, I think, I think aero trains a lot more and I don't know. But do, the, it's like we do something? Yeah, we do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's, I think even Eros like martial arts style is very different because he's more leg focused and more like hands. So it's, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we, we do some similar training for sure, like because we both do the MMA and stuff, but I think our strength and conditioning uh, is, of course, a little bit different. We also both did conditioning training, but we are training kind of very individualized. You know, we have a little bit different bodies, we have a little bit different needs, uh, and, and different styles. weaknesses. Yeah, different, different different weaknesses. This is this is the thing. So, like, like regarding like the strength and conditioning, we always focus on the weaknesses mostly at the moment. Mm. So, like, still focus more on the core and the legs. Mm. Although my legs are some of the best body part. Yeah. I think like for me, at least for now, I, I will still be focusing a lot on the, the, the Qigong exercise and the forms. The breath, like the breathing is something I train now like all the time, every day. And and once we now get back to MMA, I think it's going to be a little more conditioning work as well for both of us, actually. There's never enough endurance. Mm -hmm. Wish you both the best in life. Thank you, Jane, uh, Jamie. All right. I think that's it. Yeah, that might be it. Unless you have any final questions, we'll end the slide call. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, and got a little bit excited about uh, this course as well, or the Qigong and the, the project that we have on the Qigong training. And there's one question like, has Ido Portal had any influence on any of you? We haven't actually ever trained with Ido Portal, mm. but in, like we used to know him long before he became successful because he was really like popular in the capoeira circles mm. along before and he definitely was like an inspiration yeah. and you might not know that we both did capoeira for like for two two or, or um, two years maybe or something no almost two years, like yeah, almost. Point five, I yeah. Think. but yeah i think i think he's very good in certain aspects like the that's like the skill development and a lot of other things. But I think in, like in a recent interview, he said like the three things just breathe like normally. And it showed like he doesn't really understand the, like that part. And it's now I'm like, it's the most important thing to master really. But yeah. otherwise, I think he's very a good teacher. Yeah, we uh, actually get that question very often like have I trained under Ido Portal and so on and I think it maybe it comes from the fact that uh, our movement uh, the movement training has some similarities because of the capoeira background some movements I took a lot of inspiration to my movement from capoeira 
and basically capoeira is where Ido portal also comes from so we have some similarities in those movements which might cause these questions but we never trained with uh, with this man and also i think our approaches are very different because we like we want to be really practical and really like performance focused and it's actually not very common in the like the movement world to be actually practical and performance mm -hmm. focused because it's more about like being having fun and having like a limber body and learning different skills and so on mm -hmm. but real like practicality and real functionality it's a very different thing from the skill development alone and like handstands and all, all this stuff are really fun and really nice but they don't really transfer to like a real well-rounded performance so well so yeah it's it's a great form of training and it's a big part of what we did but we also have like a it's you know like, some... yeah, even this g-com it's a, a lot about like like this stuff is also for like pro athletes and athletes and fighters and everything like we want we do we learn this stuff because we want to improve our performance in martial arts like mixed martial arts like maybe this year or next year we will like try compete like or we will compete in a mixed martial arts competition so we want to have the like the best possible performance in this regard and that's why we also learn the achievement because it's increases the vitality and the and the spirit and of the body so so yes but otherwise also everything else from like the injury prevention and strength and everything else is also focused on like practicality and functionality because yeah. we want to like even like like in the Qigong style we want to stay in the like the same way like the we don't want to like step outside the lane, like the same way where like where it all becomes like exo esoteric like even the master talks about a lot about how everything is like esoteric and everything is like oh, yeah. like, I, mean, I, mean, I think like he said like you know esoteric can be good but but you know sometimes it goes a little too too far like the, and they lose touch with the like the norm like the yeah. practicality and like the same thing so Insane, <laughs> yeah. Because you know, we are both uh, 28 years old, and we've known each other since what eight years, maybe. I think it's yeah, almost 10 years, nine years. Yeah, ago. yeah. So we've been friends about nine years. Yeah. Let's see. All right, so that's about it. Uh, thanks for joining the live. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll see if we keep another li uh, live call maybe in a week or so or something. Try to make maybe a little more regular so you can ask all your questions that you may may have because this is a very nice way to always uh, answer to you. But that's it. Good night from Saint Petersburg. Bye. Yes.